Um, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us um, for our introduction to NAWAL workshop, um, which we have organized to commemorate Latin American indigenous peoples as part of the Native Heritage Month. My name is Lenny Ureña Valerio, and I am the Associate Director for Program Development at the, uh, in the Latin American and Iberian Institute at the University of New Mexico. The Latin American Iberian Institute is a unit on campus uh, that promotes and supports interdisciplinary teaching, research, and meaningful public engagement to advance the production and dissemination of knowledge about Latin American and Iberia. Latin American is this designated as one of seven priority areas of research at our university, and we proudly contribute to both the university's intellectual community, as well as global discourse through programming. We'd like to take a moment to recognize the traditional homelands of the Pueblo of Sandia, on which um, our university sits, the original peoples of New Mexico, Pueblo, Navajo, and Apache have deep connections to the land and have made significant contributions to the broader community statewide. We honor the land itself and those who remain stewards to this land, of this land throughout the generations and also acknowledge our committed um, relationship to indigenous peoples. Um, today, we'll have um, a workshop of, um, with, uh, from Abelardo de la Cruz, who is an owl speaker from Chicontepec in the north of Veracruz, Mexico. Currently, he's a PhD candidate in anthropology at the University of Albany and um, State University of New York. Um, he obtained his master's degree in humanistic and educational research and a bachelor's degree in law from the Autonomous University of Zacatecas. And this academic year, he serves as a Nahuatl in instructor in the Department of World Languages and Cultures at the University of Utah. Um, de, de La Cruz is co-author of the book um, Sitlamashiyot. I do need this, this Nahuatl workshop <laughs> so I can pronounce better, um, which is a colonial drama of the Three Kings. And he published a chapter titled The Value of Costume and Christianity in the Discourse of Nahuatl Catholics from the Huastecas region. And he is currently a fellow of the American Philosophical Society. I would like to take this opportunity to, to thank Abelardo for preparing this workshop for us and to welcome him to our community here in New Mexico. Gracias, Abelardo. Tienes la palabra. Eh, bueno, pues muchas gracias. Eh, primero que nada eh, por la invitación. Este, thank you so much to uh, the organizer for this event. Eh, thank you to the professor Francis Hayashida, eh, to one of my students, eh, Fatima del Ángel Guevara, and also eh, my colleague, Lenny Ureña. Thank you for the uh, invitation. Uh, I want to collaborate uh, in the NAWA studies here at the University of New Mexico. <clears throat> uh, and also I want to encourage uh, the, the students to study uh, NAWA, to study uh, my mother tongue, also in English call it as a language. Um, I am, a, I am a speaker of Nahuatl, uh, the Nahuatl is my mother tongue. <clears throat> so in this occasion, uh, I would like to share uh, the culture of my small town. And also I want to share the, the language uh, as an introduction uh, that maybe in the future you can study. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start. Very good. Uh, so I have prepared some slides about uh, this event. 
And first, I want to do, a, I want to say that in in Mexico, is a is a place that is that the languages are spoken. A, are, are many languages spoken in, in Mexico, not only Spanish, I think as, as you know. And in Mexico, we have Purepecha, we have Zapoteco, we have Otomi, we have Tarahumara, we have Tzotzil, we have Maya, right? And <clears throat> so the Nahuatl is only, uh, is, is one language, right? That is spoken. Uh, and also the, the Nahuatl is the, is the language most spoken in Mexico after uh, the Spanish. <clears throat> okay, so I was born in La Huasteca, Veracruzana, in the north of Veracruz. So in that place is spoken uh, Nahuatl. And so in my childhood, I uh, learned a very good uh, Nahuatl and also Spanish. <clears throat> so that is my uh, motherland. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is uh, also my municipio, the Chicontepec. Uh, in, the, in this place uh, is localized my uh, municipio. And in this municipio are uh, more than 200 uh, small towns. We have also a other uh, image about my municipio. So in that place is spoken basically Nahuatl, right, uh, after the Spanish. But in that place are also people, Nahuatl people, are in contact with uh, Tenec people, are in contact with uh, Totonac people, right? So uh, in that place of the North Veracruz, uh, the culture is, uh, is living, right? Como que la, la, las lenguas uh, están... Uh, viven en ese, en ese lugar. Okay, so this is also a other picture about my small town. Uh, in that place I was born, in this community, this is a rural community, very different than the urban places, right? Uh, so this is my uh, mother tongue, and in this part people work in cornfields and work with cattle, and also uh, here in this place, people, we believe in our own deities, right? So these hills that you see here, these are, these are sacred mountains, right? Because for us, <clears throat> a mountain, uh, when we see a mountain for us, that is like uh, something sacred. Because we think that in those places are living our deities, uh, next, so this is the house structure in my small town. Basically, we have here one traditional uh, 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 house, right? And this is the next, this is something uh, new, right? So in these places, uh, now what people uh, live, right? Uh, in, in this place, inside of this place, there is the kitchen, there is the uh, dorm, uh, there is the... Uh, 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 other places, right? Because uh, this is a, a, a house, right? Okay. And also, I want to talk about people. So here, there is a family. Uh, there is, is the family by Mr. Juan Bautista Martinez. They are Nahua people from a community <clears throat> uh, named Chapicla in Chicontepec. So what is their work? They are prayer specialists. They like to pray uh, Christian prayers and they uh, a, a, a pray when one person uh, passes away. Here we have another family. Uh, I have worked with them. Here we, here, uh, we have Zenobio Martinez Rosas and his wife. Uh, they are also prayer specialists. They speak uh, mainly Nahuatl and also uh, Spanish. And according to my current research, I have worked with them, uh, documenting their 
history of life, the uh, opinions about the current beliefs in our small town. <clears throat> so we have here more people. Uh, this is the history about my small town. Here we have uh, Mr. Lucio and his family. And we have here Mr. Erasto, Adela, and uh, his wife. They, they were my, uh, uh, my grandparents. Uh, they taught Nahuatl to my parents and my parents taught to me uh, the Nahuatl. So uh, uh, in, in that 70s, in that times, people from my small town, they were used believing in the local deities, in the local religion, uh, not much about the Christianity. <clears throat> so we have here uh, people uh, of these uh, current years. So they are my uh, family. Uh, here we have my uh, grandmothers, and here we have uh, our neighbors, my my neighbors in my small town. And when I was a a child, I worked with them. Right? They taught to me to work in the cornfield, and they taught me the components of our culture. They speak use uh, Nahuatl, they do not speak Spanish. We have here uh, people about Mr. Eulalio Diaz and Mr. Francisco Jose de la Cruz. They are my neighbors in my small town. They are uh, peasants, they are campesinos. And when I was <clears throat> in my 12 years old, I worked with them in the corn fields. So uh, the transport <laughs> in my uh, small town, we use the horses uh, in order to work, uh, but also like a transport, right? When one Nawa <clears throat> a boy a, is, is growing up, right? One of the skills that a, that, that he learns or she learns is to ride horses, right? So in our small town, it's very common that people uh, have uh, horses, right? In, in their own uh, uh, lands, right? So in my case, in my childhood, I learned how to ride uh, horses as well. Part of the work, part of the hobby or use in order to go to, to one place. Or, uh, so to me, the horses are considered like part of the transport in my small town. <clears throat> okay, uh, the current work. Uh, so now what people, uh, we work with domestic animals <coughs> that we name Tlapialme is a Nahua word. Tlapialme is, uh, are domestic animals and not, not all Nawas have cattle, but many of them, some families, they work with cattle, right? Uh, and also the majority of people work in the corn fields in the north of Veracruz is a uh, very humid uh, uh, weather and also very uh, rainy in the summer. So it's a good land uh, where the corn uh, likes to uh, likes to grow up, right? So my parents, and in my case, when I was living in my small town, like children, we learned to work in the corn field. One of my first lessons uh, as an our person was to work to work inside in a corn field. So in my case, I am able to work uh, in the cornfield. Now I am a, a, a Nawa scholar, <coughs> but in my uh, childhood and in my uh, in, in the next years, I was a peasant, or I am a peasant, right? So yo soy un campesino, and I say freely that I am a campesino because my parents they are campesinos, and why? Uh, maybe we are campesinos because for us, for 
you know, with a small town, the kern is a deity, right? In you know, with a small town, we name the highest deity we call Chico Mesochitl. And Chico Mesochitl is actually maize. And Chico Mesochitl is a Nahuatl word. And we name seven flower. Seven flower for us is our highest deity and is related or is exactly the maize, right? Uh, <clears throat> Nahuatl people, we say that we come from the maize, right? So in that case, we love maize. We work with maize and also we consume maize, right? For us, the maize is very important in our small towns. <clears throat> so in order to open this uh, conversation, that was part of my, uh, some components of my culture there in the uh, north of Veracruz. <clears throat> Okay, so the next part is a uh, Nahuatl vocabulary. So in this case, we will be practicing uh, Nahuatl. <coughs> the first uh, uh, question that we need to know is Ahiata. Ahiata. You can practice with me. Ahiata. Yes, yes, practice yourself. Ahiata. So, that expression, ahiata, that is, who are you? Who are you? Ahiata. Okay, so here let's practice a short conversation. In our small towns, uh, we have used one expression in order to say hello, good morning, or hi. In use, we say piali. Piali. Piali we say in the mornings, Piali we say uh, in the uh, at noon or in the night, right? So if I say Piali, the other person will uh, respond as well, Piali. Okay? So Piali, uh, Piali, Francis, uh -huh. or Pia Piali, Lenny, uh -huh. that's fine. Piali. So. We'll, Excellent, excellent, uh, Lenny. So we will be practicing in a couple of minutes more. <clears throat> okay, so Piali is a good phrase. That means like hello or uh, good morning, right? Uh, the next phrase that we need to know is let's add Kenihi Motoka. Okay, we have here Piali, Kenihi Motoka. So, Kenihi Motoka, that is, what is your name? Kenihi Motoka, right? Kenihi Motoka. For people who speak Spanish, we use sometimes in Mexican Spanish the word tocayo. Who is my tocayo? Or he is my tocayo. And we say that person, uh, we, we, we say when the, the other person has the same name like me. Uh -huh. If my name is Ave and the other person is Ave, okay, he is my tocayo, okay? But that expression tocayo <coughs> or tocaya comes from Nahuatl. And we have here in the question, Kenihi Motoka. Okay, so the other person will respond, Nano Toka Mateo. Nano toca Mateo. Okay, so that is the that's, that is the answer. We are giving the information. Nano toca Mateo. B. The next phrase is Canin ti ewa. Canin ti ewa. Aha. Uh -huh. This N that you see here, the sound is like H. Cani. Cani. Cani ti ewa. Okay, and the other person will say, Na ni ewa Mexico. Na ni ewa Mexico. So this ewa, this is the verb to be from. 
<coughs> Naniegua, Mexico. Uh -huh. That is the Veregua. So in order to finish the conversation, yes, we say Cualtitoc. Cualtitoc is like perfect, is like excellent, <coughs> uh, or very good. And we say Timoitase. Timoitase, that means uh, see you later. Timoitase. The birth of this uh, expression is Ita. Ita, that means to see. So in that case is see you later, right? So this is the uh, a short conversation, okay? So let's start with this part. Piali, the other person will say, Piali, Kenihi motoka. Then, Nano toka Mateo. Kani ti ewa, Nani ewa Mexico. To finish the dialogue, Kualtitok timoitase. In Nahuatl, we do not have expressions like nice to meet you. Use we finish the conversation and we say, perfect, Kualtitok. Uh -huh. Use we say that, right? Okay, so let's practice that uh, short dialogue. Please, two participants. To interpret this uh, dialogue, but with their information. Okay, two participants, please open your micro. Okay, Ashley, Ashley Varela, and who more? Ashley and uh, who's next? Please raise your hand. Uh, I don't know, uh, Professor uh, Francis, maybe? <laughs> Go ahead. Next time has to be somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> okay, start, <laughs> Professor Francis. Tiali. Oh, your mic is off, Ashley. Ashley. Okay, I thought that we were going to like go through it together, but I don't remember oh. actually, sorry. Should we, we can do it. Can we do it like that, Abelardo? Can we just practice the pronunciation yes. with you? Yes, it's fine. Okay. So, Piali. So, Piali. Piali. The next is Piali. Can you hear Motoka? Piali. Can you hear Motoka? Uh huh. And the next uh, sentence is Nano Toka. Add your name. Nano Toka Francis. Mm -hmm. Ashley? Nano Toka Ash Ashley. Exactly. Nano toca Ashley. Mm -hmm. uh, let's continue with the next uh, question. Canin Tiewa. Canin Tiewa. Uh -huh. One more time. Canin Tiewa. Canin Tiewa. At the end of the wa, are you, is it just, <laughs> just end with wa, or is there something else you're saying? Just cani, cani. Cani. Okay. Like an H. Like an H. Tiewa. Okay. Cani. Tiewa. Cani. Tiewa. Ashley, add your info. Um, add your info. Yes. Uh, add your info, Ashley. Like Nani Ewa Mexico. But in your case. Oh. Um. Um. Nani Ewa Mexico. Mm. As well. Quali? Nani Ewa Hawaii. Hawaii. Aha. Okay, and let's finish the conversation. Kualtitok. Kualtitok. Timuitase. 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 Timuitase is the uh, expression like see you. Timuitase. <coughs> okay, very good. So now, Professor Francis, uh, with other participants. What? We should get two new participants. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, maybe another participant, please. Don't be shy. It's not bad. Uh -huh. 
Um, I could give it a shot. <laughs> yay. Okay. And thank you, Ashley. And yay, Viviana. One more, one more. Okay, Francis and, and Viviana, please now interpret this uh, short uh, dialogue with your info. I can go instead of Francis to give her a break. <laughs> thank you, Jenny. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Uh, should I start or should you start first? Maybe I'll start. Okay, okay, <laughs> I'll start. Um, Biali. Biali. Um, kin. Kinikui motoka. Um, na notoka Viviana. Kani. Tiwa. Tiwa. Na Niwa, um, New York. Na Niwa, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what did you talk? Um, Timoy Taxe? Viviana responds the same. Um, what did you talk? Timoy Taxe? Timoy Taxe? Okay. Yes, that's it. Uh -huh, very good. <clears throat> okay, excellent. <clears throat> so that is a, a short introduction, right? So we say uh, mainly Kenihi Motoka, then we say Nanotoka Abelardo, and then Kani Tiewa. Kani Tiewa. Okay, and we say Ah, Naniewa, Mexico, Naniewa, Veracruz. And we finish the conversation saying, Cualtitoc, Timuitase. Very good. Uh, so now I would like to move on with colors in Nahuatl. Uh, we have here uh, the name in Nahuatl. This is Ishneskayotl. Ishneskayotl could be translated in uh, English like appearance. For us is colors. So the first one is kamohtik. Kamohtik, right? Re uh, repeat yourself. Kamohtik. The next is chichiltik. Chichiltik, that is red. We have kostik. Kostik, that is yellow. We have yayawik. Yayawik, this is black. We have then Shoshoktik. Shoshoktik, that is green. Then we have Kafentik. Kafentik is brown. Kafentik. Then we have Teneshtik. Teneshtik, that is uh, gray. <clears throat> we have Chipawak. Chipawak, that is white. And we have Azultik, that is for blue. And we have a achilcos, that is orange, right? And finally, we have cuawencho. Cuawencho is pink. Uh -huh. So that are mainly the colors in Nahuatl. So let's repeat one more time. <clears throat> repeat with me. Camotic, chichiltic, caustic, yayawic, shoshoctic. Kafentik, Teneshtik, Chipawak, Azultik, Achilcos, and Cuauhtémoc. Right? So this is Uh Mainly that are the colors in our very used in order to describe the, uh, uh, the, the, the places, right? And obvious. <clears throat> Something to know about these colors in Nahuatl that the idea or the, yeah, the, the idea that we have is that colors in Nahuatl comes from the environment. Uh, so as example, camotic, this comes from a uh, camote. Uh -huh. And we have in Mexico, that is uh, uh, sweet potatoes that are like, uh, like purple. Then we have chichiltic that comes from Chile, that Chile is red. We have caustic here. I'm not so sure <coughs> which is the element that is described caustic, but 
we have costly and costly is a necklace and probably is like the color of a uh, of gold and we have here yayawik yayawik this comes from a uh, maize we have a kind of maize in in nahuatl that is uh, like blue or or black and so that is for us the uh, the, the the color uh, black so in that case i mean that uh, uh, colors in nahuatl comes from the environment right we are when we are describing something we say oh this this is like that this is like that right so as example tenestic this word that you see here the root of this of this word is nestle <coughs> and nestle is ash or ashes and what is the color of ash is gray tenestic right so that is the idea that we have in Nahuatl. Very good. So uh, let's move on with other uh, document. Abelardo, can I ask a question? Yes. So a couple of the, the words, it looks like the root is actually Spanish though, like azultic and the brown with cafe. So are there? Yes, uh, in that case is true. As example, we have café, caféntic, that comes from Spanish, and that is café, or azultic, right? Uh, that are a, a loan words, right? That we now what lies it, that we uh, incorporated in our hours, right? And just we put that tick, that is like the appearance. Uh -huh. Do you know if there's a an alternate word that doesn't have a Spanish root, or if they're what the word was before the, you know, before the Spanish invasion? Uh, I'm not so sure, but probably like Azultic maybe was Turquesa, right? But in other places like the the the, the color of Turkeys, not. In all places are like turquesa, but for other other places they say uh, like the color of turquesa that was chalchiwit uh, uh, or, okay. or chalchiwites. Uh -huh. Do you have Chal a comment? Okay. Chalchiwites, like the stone, the chalchiwites. Like e exactly. Um, in the comment. Uh huh. Uh, Jay Ortega, do you okay. want to turn on your your microphone? Or, or camera or not. Oh I, yeah, I was just answering uh, your question, or I yeah. guess it's not a complete answer because it's just our dialect, but green and blue are the same color. And I think it was like that um, before okay. contact, I'm pretty uh, sure. Okay, great, thank sometimes, you. Yeah, sometimes we also say like, um, like sky. So like, and then so it's like sky blue. Uh, yeah. Okay, great. Right, because it does, just because in English or other languages, we say they're distinguishes two different colors then, then that's not true everywhere. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ortega. Uh, that's uh, very fun. Uh, in, uh, in which which variant do do, do you speak uh, now at uh, Ortega? Oh, Ortega, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, sorry, I'm having trouble with my microphone. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why I keep turning <laughs> turning it off. Yeah. So 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 which which variant of now at do you speak? Um. Honestly, I don't know the name, <laughs> but my uh, my grandparents are from um, well, my that my dad's dad's side is like from Michoacan, so it's that mm -hmm. dialect area. I'm not sure what it's called though exactly. <coughs> well, uh, <clears throat> I do not know much people about Michoacan, but I think in Michoacan, probably in the municipio of Aguililla. In that place, I think speak Nahuatl. Uh -huh. Okay, good to know that, Ortega. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's continue with a much more uh, vocabulary. Uh, one second. Okay, here it is. So let's continue talking. <clears throat> okay, so the next part, uh, we have this uh, chart and we will know the greetings. In our small town, is very important, the greetings. So we have this expression first, like if I say piali, the next phrase is nimitz palos. <clears throat> and we say piali, nimitz palos. So in nimitz palos, I am saying like, hello, I will greet you. Right. So when I say that expression, I raise my hand and like telling to him, like, I'm going to greet you. So and the other person will say the same. Piali, nimitz la palos. In the mornings, in, at noon or in the night. In our community, we practice this greeting, like shaking hands, uh, touching the hands, right, a lot. In, in this case, uh, in these current times, uh, it was, I think, something like a shock because the government uh, say that, please do not uh, greet the, the other person with hands. But in our community, I think was something more like problematic because it's part of the culture, right? However, in our small town people, they say, I think for first time, they prefer not to greet the person with, with hands. Probably now they are doing <clears throat> a little by little. Okay, so we say this expression, piali nimitz palos. The other person will say, piali nimitz palos. And when we say that, a uh, Professor Francis, in our small town, use, we raise our hand, and what I have seen is that people use touch like the four fingers, four fingers to touch. That is the greeting in Nahuatl, right? No, no, no es como apretar las manos fuerte. No, in our small towns, men and women use the touch the hands, touch the fingers. And that is the greeting in Nahuatl. <coughs> Very good. So the next question is, Keniji Motoka? One more time appears this question. Keniji Motoka. So here let's add our uh, name. In my case, Nanotoka Adelardo. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm going to practice with maybe with Alma Castro. Alma, in your case, Keniji Motoka. Alma, are you there? Or uh, maybe Lupita Aviles? Lupita, Keniji Motoka. Nano Toka, Lupita. Nano Toka, Lupita. That's fine. Very good. Er, or maybe Barbara. Barbara Kuhn. Keniji Motoka. Ah, Nano Toka, Barbara. Aha, uh -huh, that's fine. So you are uh, creating in Nahuatl, right? Can you, can you give us advice about that final air puff? Are you making uh -huh. your diaphragm go up? How are you creating that? I've run out of air when I get to the end of the word. <laughs> <laughs> right, in, in this case is notoka. Notoka is like notoka. eight. Aha, uh -huh, exactly. Yes, we have these sounds in Nahuatl. Can you hear motoka? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, yeah. eh, eh, cool. Okay, the next question is appears again. Kani ti ewa. Kani ti ewa. So, Alana Coates. Kani ti ewa. I don't think I have a mic. Or can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. I'm not an earbud. Um, Alana, Kani Ti Ewa. Na Nella? 
So well, do I respond Nanua? Yes, Nani Ewa. In my case, Nani Ewa Mexico. In your case? Oh, uh, Nanaui, uh, New Mexico. Ah, New Mexico. Uh huh. So the, the question, can in Ewa, is the question, where are you from? Uh huh. Excellent. So we have these three questions. Piali, Minitz Las Palos. The next is, Kenihi Motoka Nanotoka Abelard. Or Kani Tiewa Nani Ewa Mexico. Uh huh. Very good. Uh, we will be practicing in the next minutes. So let's continue with other basic question in Nahuatl, very important for our students. This is Kenihi Ti Itztok. Kenihi Ti Itztok. Kenihi, Kenihi Ti Itztok. Kenihi Ti Itztok. When we pronounce that sentence, Kenihi Ti Itztok, I am asking the person, how are you? Kenihi Ti Itztok. And the other person uh, will respond, Ni itztok nel quali. Ni itztok nel quali, this is the uh, phrase. Ni itztok means I am, I am. Nel quali is very good. Ni itztok nel quali. Uh -huh. So that is the <coughs> kind of answer. Right? Okay, so let's practice. Uh, Alana, Alana Coates. Can you hit the eat stock, Alana? Uh, repeat, repeat the phrase. Ni eat stock? Ni eat stock? Nel quali. Nel quali. Yes, that's it. Uh -huh. Ni itztok nel quali. Very good. Uh, uh, Jean Ugalde, I think it's Jean Ugalde. Can you hit itztok, Jean? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, maybe Miss Bach. Okay. Uh, uh. Can you hit the eatstock? The eatstock nel quali. Uh huh. The eatstock nel quali. That's fine. Oh, you are Kendrick? <laughs> yes. <coughs> Quality talk. Uh, very good. So that is a, a basic question. Can you hit the eatstock? And we respond, the eatstock nel quali. However, we have five additional uh, answers. The next should be Nel Niyol Paktok. Nel Niyol Paktok. Nel Niyol Paktok means I am really happy. Nel Niyol Paktok. Right? In this case, here is Nel Niyol Paktok. Right? Nel Niyol Paktok, I am really happy. If you hear this question, can you hit the it's talk? Use, you need to answer this phrase, nel niyol paktok. <clears throat> the, other que, the, the other answer could be nimo kwesoa. Nimo kwesoa. Nimo kwesoa, eh, this means I am sad. Nimo kwesoa. Uh -huh. So nimo kwesoa is this image, nimo kwesoa. The next is nel nikwalantok. Nel nikwalantok, that means I am really angry. Nel nikwalantok. Uh -huh. <coughs> is this, with this image, is nel nikwalantok. Uh, the next phrase is nisiahtok. Nisiahtok. So nisiahtok is I am tired. Uh -huh. Nisiahtok. And finally, uh, uh, Professor Francis is ni mahmawi, ni mahmawi, ni mahmawi. That is, I am afraid. Ni mahmawi, huh? ni mahmawi. You can match 
with this first image, Nima Maui. Okay, so now <clears throat> let's practice these uh, possible answers. The first is, is very independent, very independent. The next is Nel Niyolbaktok, Nimo Kwesoa, Nel Nikwalantok, Nisiatok, Nimahmawe. Uh -huh. So, Nimahmawe, we are now completing several answers for our question. Can you hit the eatstock? Okay, so let's uh, start with Barbara Kuhn. Barbara, my question one more time. Can you hit the eatstock? Ah, eatstock nel quali. Aha, that's fine. Um, Lenny, can you hit the eatstock? Nistok nishautok. Nitsiatok. Actually, use nitsiatok. Uh -huh. Just just that nitsiatok. Yes, nitsiatok means I am tired. And Alana Cuates, can you hit the eatstock? Or, or maybe. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, it's on mute. Um, the Nisotok, Nitotok, Tok. Aha, Nitotok. Sorry. Nis, yeah. Nisiatok, you mean? Nisiatok. Mm hmm. Aha, uh -huh. Nisiatok, I am tired, of course. Very good, Alana. <clears throat> Lupita Aviles. Can you hit the eat stock? Nel Mignon Pactok. Okay, it's a very good response. Viviana Sanchez. Can you hit the eat stock? Uh, Nis. Nisiatok. Nisiatok, of course. <coughs> I am tired. Uh -huh. Ashley Varela, can you hit the eatstock? I'm gonna, I'm gonna say um, ni, niwatok. Nisiatok, uh -huh. Nisiatok. Aha, Tlao el Kuali, Kena. And Humor, maybe. Uh, eh, who is more? Uh, okay, uh, Professor Francis, can you hit the eat stock? How do you say we are all tired? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Everybody's answering ni se so how would you uh, say? Okay, Instead so of, let's let's pluralize. Yeah, how do we plural plural pluralize? In that case, let's add instead of ni use me. In this case should be ni se toque. Ni toque. Aha, uh -huh. we are okay. all tired. I uh -huh. think this is the word we're all going to remember from the workshop. <laughs> How do you say or, we are we are all tired of Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes, Tisia toque. Pan Zoom. Aha. Right. Pan Zoom like in, in Zoom. Okay. Hey, excellent. <laughs> okay. Uh, and maybe Lenny, can you hit the eat stock? Already, I already went, but ni stock nel quali. Ni stock nel quali. Yes, that is, I am very good. Excellent. So you have ni stock nel quali in order to respond the question. However, you have other five possible answers, right? Okay, so let's repeat. Oh, um, <coughs> actually, I have a quick question. Viviana. So, nitstok nilkwali, is that like a general response back to the question? What does that mean? Exactly. It's, it's, 
is an independent uh, answer, right? Ni iso okay. nel quale use means I am very good. Oh, oh got you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Uh, ni, th this, this it stock, it stock is like to be. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Entonces, like I am. Nel, nel, this means really. And quali, quali, this means good. Okay. okay I thank am you. really good. Uh huh. Okay, and in the next uh, phrases, like in the New York Pack Talk, use we are saying <clears throat> our feelings. I am really happy. I am sad. I am tired. I am angry. Uh, I am afraid, right? The, the other answers. Okay, very good. <clears throat> so in order to continue with this document, Uh, we have in Nahuatl personal pronouns, right? So as you see here in these in this, uh, phrases, many of them start with ni, uh, like ni or ti, or ni appears here, or ni mitzlapalos, always with ni and also with ti, uh, that are personal pronouns. <clears throat> In Nahuatl, we have six personal pronouns. Na, the first is na, that is I. Then we have ta, that is you. And then we have ya, that is he or she or it. In Nahuatl, we don't have a gender. Use, we say ya for he, uh, he, she, or it. <coughs> In plural is Tohuanti, Tohuanti, like we, in Mohuanti, you all, and in Ijuanti. So these six uh, pronouns are independent pronouns because when we want to conjugate a verb, when we want to conjugate a noun, we need to transform these pronouns to prefix subject. So na becomes ni, ta becomes ti, Ya becomes zero, Tohuanti becomes ti, Inmohuanti becomes in, and Inihuanti they becomes zero. If we do not have a prefix subject for he, she, or it, or they, right? So <clears throat> when we say ni itstok, I am using ni, like. This is the uh, Soviet prefix, ni. And so we need to attach with the verb, the itstok nelquali. I am very good. Or here there is another example, like I am afraid, ni mahmawi. Ni is a Soviet and mahmawi is the verb, right? Because I am using this uh, a Soviet prefix. Uh, as example, In the question that I ask to other person, I say, can he hit the stock? Now I am replacing instead of me, I am adding T. And who is T? He is T. Is you. Uh -huh. So in, in now what we work with prefix Soviets, with prefijo sujeto. So now what works with prefixes, uh, and also now what is considered as an agglutinating language, because in one word, in a noun word, incorporates noun, a, or, or, or like in a verb, uh, contains Soviet, Oviet, verb, number, adverbs, using one word. What in Spanish is a sentence with a six words, in Nahuatl could be use one word, as the same in English. Okay, so will be the same for uh, uh, for, for, for plurals. Tohuanti becomes ti, in mohuanti becomes in. In this case is when I am conjugating verbs and nouns, but uh, in plural. Okay, so we will be learning a little bit about a couple words and how to conjugate them. Okay, so now I want to add 
some words, uh, some Nava words, maybe you know some of them. The first one, Lenny, is Kali. 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 Who knows? Who knows what is Kali? Maybe we have here now what students? Kali. What is Kali in Nahuatl? Huh? No? Viviana? Kali in, in, in English is house. Uh -huh. So that is house. Okay, when we want to conjugate Kali, because it's a noun, I will never conjugate like Nikali, look like I am a house or you are a house, never. But I can, con but I am able to conjugate the house in third person when I say it is a house. So in, th in that case, I will take this ya yeah, that is used for he, she, or it, and I will say Kali. So when I see Kali in Nahuatl written, I mean, it, alone Kali, it means in terms of grammar, it means it is a house. It is a house. Because yeah, in Nahuatl, when I, when it comes to, uh, as, as a prefix subject, is zero, right? So I am, if, if I say Kali, in English or Spanish, I am saying it is a house. Okay, so in that case works <coughs> the, the pronouns in third person in Nahuatl. And many of the Mexican languages like uh, Maya, like Huichol, uh, uh, um, uh, other, other, I think Zapotec, in third person do, do not exist. Uh, the, 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 the prefix Soviet in the person. Use a pronoun. Uh -huh. Okay. However, the next word, each pocket, I can, I am able to conjugate with all the three, or all the six uh, a, a prefix Soviets. Because each pocket means junk, junk, woman, una joven mujer. Right, so in that case, Lenny, you could you you could say ni ichpokat, ni ichpokat. That means I am a drunk woman. That means ni ichpokat. Uh huh. So it's, it's a sentence in Nahuatl. <coughs> I have a question, um, Lenny. How do you distinguish the plural in the third person if you don't have um? A word when you're adding like a the prefix to the word how do you distinguish whether it is house or those are houses ah uh, okay well uh, one one uh, i think like uh mark uh, to to for 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 uh nouns is uh meh this meh is the ending when the nouns are in plural. Okay. Uh-huh. And when are, as example, Kali is singular. But if I say Kalme, um, okay, this is are my garabatos. So, <laughs> so me, me, if I, if I read me, I, I, understand that is that is the that is a number that is in plural uh -huh. so cali is singular and calme are plural however if i read calme i know that they are houses como esos o esas son casas no uh -huh. Th that could be my uh, translation in plural Okay, so the next uh, word is ayotli. Ayotli. Ayotli is squash. Ayotli. Uh -huh. uh, do you remember the small town Ayotzinapa in Mexico? Okay, I think it comes from ayotli, squash. And also we have tlali. 
clearly is land, clearly. Uh -huh. Then we have a uh, Professor Francis Telpocatl. Telpocatl. Telpocatl means a young, sorry, young man, un joven, hombre, of course. Uh -huh. Telpocatl. Uh, <coughs> and the next is Tochtli. Tochtli. Tochtli in Nahuatl, uh, in English, is rabbit. Tochtli. Uh -huh. Yes, that is a touchly, a uh, touchly. And also, we have a long word from Spanish. This is caballo. Oh, horse. Caballo is a horse, Barbara, of course. Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> okay, uh -huh. no, as, no, no, long, no, as long as fine. I'm on. How do you say not? Like, I am not young. Okay. Ni <laughs> ishpokatla. <laughs> exactly. Well, first, you need to conjugate ni each pocket that is in, in Nahuatl. Mm -hmm. However, if you want to say if you want to say I am not, you have two options. Ashkana, that is I am not. Ashkana is the idea of the negative. Or also you can attach to the noun ash me each. That is Ashni Ichpokatl. If you divide, should be this. Yes, Ashni Ichpokatl. Uh -huh. So that is or Ashkana Nichpokatl. Board waves are, are, are fine. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent. So, uh, Kawayo, it is a horse, or maybe Ashni Kawayo. I am not a horse. Uh, you can, we can negate. Misto, misto, I think could be uh, very important for uh, la cultura in United States. Misto is cat. Misto, misto, that is cat. And also michi, michi, for people who are from Michoacan. <clears throat> michi comes from, uh, well, from Nahuatl, but means fish, fish. Michi, michi. And then <coughs> two words more. The first one is Tlamach Tihket. Tlamach Tihket. Tlamach Tihket, Lenny, is professor or is teacher or instructor. Tlamach Tihket. Aha, Tlamach Tihket. And the next is Momach Tihket. Momach ticket means student. Uh -huh. Momach ticket is student. We can say, Francis, nitla match ticket. Nitla match ticket. I am a instructor. I am a professor. Or maybe I am not. Ash, ash nitla match ticket. I am not a professor. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's repeat this uh, vocabulary in Nahuatl. Repeat yourself, please. Kali, Ichpokatl, Ayotli, Tlali, Telpokatl, Tochli, Kawayo, Misto, Michi, Tlamach Tihketl, and Momach Tihketl. Right? So that are uh, now at vocabulary. Right, like part of this uh, introduction. Okay, so. Averlado, we have a, a, a question in the chat. Okay. About T, which is second person singular and also first person sing, uh, plural. So how do we distinguish? <clears throat> okay, uh, that is very good. Uh, thank you, Anka. Uh, yes, this T means uh, is, is a second person singular, right? T comes from ta. And in plurals, T is, uh, is the first person, but plural, right? T comes from tohuanti. Well, uh, practicing with, this, with these words, uh, I'm going to write 
uh, P del pocket. You are a young man. Ajá, tú eres un joven. But now eh, practicing in plural. P del pocame. Uh, Okay, 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 okay. I want to expand it. Okay, very good. So, in this case, the telpocat is singular. You are a drunk man. But in plural, let's start with the. That means we. Telpoca. But the, the the idea of plurals is me. So this me is like the trait that I am talking in plural. Uh -huh. So there is no confusion. Uh -huh. So title pocket is you are, you are. But when, when I start with T and I am finishing my a noun with me, is, is a marker that I am talking in plural. Uh -huh. I think that is my uh, explanation. <coughs> uh, what else? <laughs> uh, please don't be shy. Uh, yeah, so that, this, that this was, was, yeah. That was very uh, helpful, and it shows the difference between writing things down the way we traditionally learn the grammar and how it's actually used and what it sounds like, because this would not be a problem for anybody who speaks the language, and they'd wonder what our problem is. <laughs> yes, the, the, the Nahuatl is alive, and um, part of my work in the last 15 years has been to teach uh, Nahuatl as a second language, Nahuatl as, a, as L2, right? And many of my students <coughs> uh, tell me that uh, to, to, to learn Nahuatl as a second language is not the same, like only like to read and only to, uh, to understand, like to do like lecto escritura. Uh -huh. So uh, thank you for, for your comment, Barbara. Uh, what else? <laughs> uh, any other question about the Nahuatl, your impressions, uh, the culture? I don't know. Please turn on your cameras. <laughs> um, I actually had a question. Um, mm -hmm. So for I guess individuals who are interested in learning, do you know of any like free resources that are available to anyone? Uh, Diana, are you a student at UNM? I'm not actually. I think I just stumbled upon this class like on social media and thought it would be fun. Yes, we have uh, several resources in terms of literature. And also, uh, we have music free on YouTube, and we have friends from uh, uh, colleagues from the <clears throat> several universities of the uh, of California. They are developing some apps in order to learn the uh, Nahuatl. So I can I can share uh, with Lenny or Professor Francis. And they can spread out to all of you everyone. Yeah, we have resources. your email. Um, I'll also say just for if you're at UNM or um, or actually even if you're not. So we're going to be offering through UNM the um, online classes in Nawa, mm -hmm. but it all we're also looking to see how we could offer it through CNM, the same class which is a, the, the community college that's across the street from UNM and their tuition rates are really are quite low, and so that would be a way for you know anyone who's not enrolled at UNM to to take the same classes. And I think the tuition is like it's less than sixty dollars a credit hour, so it's much much more reasonable. Um, but as we you know, I don't know if there are other folks here who are who aren't at UNM who might want to take the classes. Um, and if there's interest, then we you know we'll we'll work on developing that um, so that other people can take the class and not have to pay UNM tuition. Uh, and I'm super glad you joined us, Viviana. I'm glad you found out about the class. Yeah. Yeah, I think someone posted on Instagram and I was just like, oh, yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, that's great. No, I appreciate it. 
<clears throat> when you said that Nawal is agglutinative, look at the last two vocabulary words. That's fantastic. They're only different by the first syllable. So how do you, you know, take it apart? The mashki, mashti kettle, is that like learning or something? What, what does that translate as, that word? Uh, Barbara, I think I cannot understand very quiet your uh, question. Ah, okay. Mashtich kettle is okay. the same, yeah. Uh -huh. In both words for teacher and, and student. And that's very exciting because it implies there's something in common and only a little bit different at the beginning of each word. <laughs> So yes. That, yes. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Uh, the, the the root of this of this verb. Oh, this is a noun, of course. Mm -hmm. But this this noun, uh, we have this uh, root. Okay, one second. Close. Okay. Here it is. Um, excellent. <clears throat> okay, this uh, the root is this tlamachti, tlamachti, and this this comes from much uh, tia comes from much comes from mati. Mati is to know something, and much tia is to teach, to teach something. Uh, this is, okay. <clears throat> and we have this la, this la, this is uh, like an oviet, right? But this is a noun. So the tla uh, is a person who knows something and then in terms of teaching a person who teaches something, that la comes from the ovid. Uh -huh. And this ket, and this ket, this is like the <coughs> is the nominative in terms of the uh, in terms of the grammar. Is is the nominative, is a person who knows something, is a person who uh, teach something. However, for a student, we have mo. That mo is the passive voice, is a person who receives something through the teaching, through the knowledge. Uh -huh. So for students, we have here like the, the, the passive voice. Uh -huh. So in that case, we name <laughs> who is a professor and who is a student. Right, and because both nouns, Barbara, comes from the root mati to know something is knowledge. Uh -huh. That's it, Barbara. <clears throat> Excellent. Uh, any any other question or no? Huh. <coughs> Professor Francis, or uh, oh, I, I just want to thank you so much, Abelardo. It's been a long time since I've been in a language class, and this is super fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank I, you I want so to much. thank everybody who's who came to participate, especially those of you who stayed to the end. We really appreciate it. Um, I think when you registered for the Zoom, we got your email addresses so that we can send out those resources that. Abelardo was mentioning, and also mm -hmm. let people know if we're offering the classes again at UNM and, at, and through CNM. And the classes will be online, so you don't have to actually be physically in Albuquerque to take the class. Um, so we'll, we'll, you know, keep, keep everybody posted. We want to get generate more interest in in the Nahuatl classes. So thank you all for, for being here today. <laughs> thank you, Abelardo. That was great. It is a pleasure. Yeah, and I'm going Thank to you. put the, the Nahuatl for We Are All Tired of Zoom up on my door now. So <laughs> next Excellent. time we do that, maybe we can do it in person. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, how do you say thank you? Yeah. Nahuatl. 
Uh, yeah, uh, one of the expression that we uh, say is Tlaska Mati. Tlaska Mati is expression to say thank you. Tlaska Mati, Tlaska Mati, Abelardo. Tlaska Mati to you. Okay, uh -huh. great. Thank you, audience members. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye.